April showers means May flowers, and the Nintendo Switch is getting a pretty nice downpour of games in the month of May. I guess I should have been a meteorologist with these terrible puns. But anyways, from first party to third party to indie games, there's a nice variety of games that are coming out, so we're going to go over them. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new, and of course, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to share and like it. But without any further ado, let's talk about the best upcoming Nintendo Switch games for the month of May. Kicking things off, we have a game on May 4th called The Colonist. Now, when you look at this game, it definitely will remind you of SimCity, and I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, SimCity games are super fun, especially if they're done well. Now, basically, The Colonist has you playing as a group of robots who find an open plot of land and decide to build a civilization there. You have to manage resources, build up your town, take care of various things, make different ways to have transportation, so on and so forth. The game offers different challenges that you can encounter or a sandbox mode where you can just do pretty much whatever you want and not have to worry about the overlooming challenges that the game offers. I think it looks pretty fun, you know, it's not probably going to be as popular as something as SimCity, but games like this, as long as they're done well and, you know, the frame rate is solid on them, I think can be a lot of fun. The Colonists will hit your Nintendo Switch on May 4th. Coming up on May 6th, we have Skate City. Now, this is a side-scrolling skateboarding game, and, you know, I'm still waiting on Skater XL for the Nintendo Switch. Like, the lack of skateboarding games on the Switch is absolutely ridiculous to me, especially as someone who skateboarded for, like, 15-plus years, so I'm definitely glad to see this game coming out. You basically customize your skater, your skateboard, what different tricks you want to have, and then you hit the streets in one of three different levels that look pretty sprawling. Like, although it's a side-scrolling game, it looks like these levels are very open there's actually an endless skate mode as well that you can encounter or there's different challenges that are more like a standard game but i'm really enjoying what i see from this game obviously it's not something as great as like skate or whatnot but i do like the low poly art style i think the music that they have in the trailer sounds really nice and it'll just be nice to have you know sort of a proper skateboarding on the nintendo switch because we haven't had a proper skateboarding game on the switch skate city comes out on may 6th and i will definitely be checking this game out all right, before we get into the next game on the list, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. I've said it before and I'll say it again. RGT wants you to be protected when you're surfing the internet. And Surfshark VPN was kind enough to sponsor today's video and they will give you that protection. Surfshark VPN is a fast and easy to use VPN service that you can use on a variety of devices. I have it on my PC right here. I simply just click a button and bam, now I'm protected online. Aside from just protecting your data online, Surfshark VPN also allows you to access things like Netflix and Hulu from other regions to get more content, plus tons more of additional features. And right now, by using the link in the description box down below in the code RGT, you can get Surfshark VPN at an 83% discount, which is the cheapest you can get it anywhere. Plus, you get three extra months for free. One membership allows you to hook up all your devices to your account, whether it's a cell phone, a desktop, a laptop, or even your Xbox or PlayStation console. So protect yourself with Surfshark VPN. Check out the link in the description box down below, and huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. On May 13th, we have a game called Monster Harvest coming out. Now, this game looks a lot like a part Stardew Valley, part Pokemon, part Harvest Moon. It's definitely not the most original looking game in the world, but I do think it'll find a market, especially on the Switch. You basically grow crops in your farm and you mutate them into planimals. You fight against other planimals and yeah, it's kind of like a Pokemon style game, but you got the Harvest stuff like in Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley. It's a story-driven game that seems to have somewhat of an interesting narrative, but one thing that really stands out to me is the art style of this game. I think it looks really nice. I don't know what it is about this art style, but something just captivates me a bit more than other top-down 2D games in this genre when it comes to the way this game looks. Also on May 13th, we have RWBY Grim Eclipse Definitive Edition coming out as well. Now, I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Is it Ruby or is it RWBY? I don't know, whatever. I'm not familiar with the source material, which is, of course, based on a Rooster Teeth show that I never watched. But it is a 3D hack and slash game for up to four people to play either online or co-op. So that actually makes it kind of interesting. Now, considering, like I said, I don't know anything about the source material, I can't really say all that much about the game, but I do like the way that the combat looks and i think the cell shaded graphical style is actually pretty nice kind of has like a no more heroes vibe to it 
Upgrades and abilities for your characters are unlockable as you play the game throughout, so that will keep things fresh. You get new moves and things like that, and I don't know. This might end up being a really good game. Like I said, I don't know anything about this source material, but RWBY Grim Eclipse Definitive Edition is coming out on May 13th, and I don't know. Would this be a game that I would be interested in? Let me know in the comments down below. On May 14th, we have Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero hitting the Nintendo Switch. Now, these are underwater alien survival games where you're basically put into an alien world underwater. I'd love to show you more of this game and talk about it a little bit more, but hey, it's a Bandai Namco game, and they don't like it when you use their trailers. But this is definitely a game that I think looks pretty cool. I love games like Endless Ocean on the Wii. Yes, that's one of my guilty pleasures. Like, I don't know, they had a good soundtrack too, but I'm kind of interested in this game. It was free on PlayStation Plus, and I I forgot to download it i was downloading other stuff but yeah i'll probably check it out on the nintendo switch when it comes out on may 14th also on May 14th, we have some first party Nintendo Switch games coming out with Famicom Detective Club, The Missing Air, and Famicom Detective Club, The Girl Who Stands Behind. Now, The Missing Air has you solving a murder case involving a wealthy Japanese family, while The Girl Who Stands Behind has you solving a ghostly case around a Japanese high school. Now, these games were originally released on the Famicom in Japan, and we might have just talked about the Sharp Twin Famicom recently on the channel, so you should check out that video after this one, but these games were actually never localized until now. You basically do your detective stuff. You talk to different suspects, interrogate people, hunt for clues, visit various locations. Honestly, it seems to be like a Phoenix Wright style of game before Phoenix Wright was really popular. I kind of have my eye on these games. I probably won't pick up both of them, but I might pick up one of them to see if I like them. So maybe you will like these games too when Famicom Detective Club, The Missing Heir, and Famicom Detective Club, The Girl Who Stands Behind come out on May 14th. On May 18th, we have SnowRunner coming to the Nintendo Switch. You, you basically just drive like these big ass trucks and blizzards and try to survive and stuff. I don't know, dude. Like, it's obviously like a simulation style of driving game, but like, people seem to be really into this game when it came out on like PC and stuff. I remember so many people playing this game. So I don't, I don't know if it's almost like a meme at this point or what it is about the game that makes it fun, but maybe people just like struggling driving in blizzardous conditions and stuff like that to live out their fantasies of being like a logger or something i know there's a tv show about it too i don't know maybe not a game for me but i don't know if it gets decent reviews i might end up checking it out and that is snow runner on may 18th a game that we were recently introduced to, Aerial Knights Never Yield, will be coming out on May 19th, aka Kane Day, for the Nintendo Switch. Now, we were introduced to this game during the last Nintendo Indie World presentation. It's a highly stylized endless runner taking place in a Tokyo-style futuristic Detroit. You run, you jump, you slide, you hit the ramp and take a dive and avoid crap in your way as you try to get to the ends of these levels. I think the art style of the game does look really nice, it's sort of like 3D characters on a 2D plane, and the music seems pretty good too. I'm not really a huge fan of Endless Runners, but I can appreciate what they're going for with this game, and I think if you are a fan of Endless Runners, this will actually be a really good game to check out when it hits the Nintendo Switch on May 19th. On May 21st, we have Miitopia, another first-party Nintendo game coming to the Nintendo Switch. Cast your friends, family, or anyone you choose in a comedy-filled adventure to bring down the face-stealing Dark Lord. Create and customize me, trademark, characters of anyone you like and assign them roles in the fantasy adventure of a lifetime. With expanded customization in Miitopia, you can even add wigs and makeup to give your characters more character. Watch your characters come to life as your best friend and dear old grandma team up the top of the dark villainous Dark Lord that resembles your grumpy uncle. So I totally stole that listing from Nintendo's website because I never played the original Miitopia. I'm going to be honest with you guys, I have zero desire to play this Miitopia when it comes to the Nintendo Switch, but I obviously had to highlight this game. So yes, that is Miitopia. It comes out on May 21st. You might like it or you might be like me and just be like, nah, nah. Also on May 21st, we have Knockout City coming to us from EA. It's basically an online-based dodgeball-style game in which you try and defeat the other teams that you're playing against. Now, honestly, I have to question whether or not this game will do well because unlike a lot of games in this style, which are usually free-to-play, this game actually costs money. And even free-to-play games like Ninjala seem to lose their luster pretty quickly. Now, this game does have cross-platform play, which should help keep the community somewhat active, but uh, I don't know, man. I'm probably going to skip out on this one, but I I have heard that the gameplay is actually pretty fun, so maybe I'll change my tune on it, but Knockout City does come out on May 21st. On May 25th, we have a game that I already own on my PlayStation 4, but I've never opened it, and now I'm going to buy it again on my Switch because 
I have problems. And that is Man Eater. I thought this game was going to be canceled for the Nintendo Switch. And you know what? I'm glad it's not. Because you play as a shark. You level up your shark to crazy levels. And you cause havoc, destruction, and chaos in the Gulf Coast. And sharks are cool. I like sharks. I think they're awesome when they're like eating people like in Jaws and stuff. Now, like I said, I do own this game on the PlayStation 4. It's still sealed or whatever. I don't know. I just never got around to playing it. But I feel like this is a game I would like to play in handheld mode on my Switch. You know, just like laying in bed messing around. It reminds me a lot of the Jaws game for the PS2 and the Xbox, Jaws Unleashed, which was absolutely fantastic, but I've heard from people that it's even more crazy and over the top, so I'm super looking forward to this game. I hope it runs good, or else I'll be super disappointed. Yes, Man Eater finally comes out on the Switch on May 25th, and I don't know, man, I'm really excited for it. Also on May 25th, we have Shemagama Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster coming out. And, you know, this is a popular RPG game that originally released on the PlayStation 2. I never got super into the Shemagama Tensei series. I played the one on the DS, Devil Summoner, something. It had some sort of tag at the end of it that made DS. But people seem pretty hype about this remaster, so I definitely want to cover it. Now, of course, this game is going to include improved visuals, full voice acting in either Japanese or English, which you can select, fine gameplay, and additional difficulty sets. Settings. I will say it does look kind of cool, but I don't know. It's definitely kind of weird. And, you know, if you're not super into JRPGs, you might not have this one on your radar. But I know a lot of people are excited for this game, so I was not going to leave it off my list. Shemagama Tensei 3 Nocturne HD Remaster hits your Switch on May 25th, and you might be excited for it. And the final game we're going to talk about is a game that I think has hidden gem potential, and that is Earth Defense Force World Brothers coming out on May 27th. Now, Earth Defense Force, aka EDF, is a great series in which you're taking down aliens invading Earth with a squad of people, and now it's finally coming to the Nintendo Switch, but there's a main difference with this version of the game based on other Earth Defense Force games, and that is the graphical style. Now, this is also coming out on the PlayStation 4, so don't be like, oh, they're just doing it because the Switch is for kids or something like that, but instead of the more realistic aspect, Aesthetic. They actually went with a 3D voxel graphical style for this game, which at first I didn't really like it, but now it's sort of growing on me the more I watch gameplay and trailers from it. You're basically tasked with taking down large alien creatures that have invaded Earth, and I mean, you gotta kill them. Levels are based on real world locations, so there'll be some landmarks you'll recognize as well. And these games are just simply fun to me. Like, it's just so much fun to blow up these massive aliens. And like I said, the 3D voxel style kind of turned me off a little bit at first, but now I'm sort of on board with it, and I just love the fun gameplay that these games bring so as long as the gameplay is good i think the graphical style will actually sort of hold up well especially when you look at how you know 3d style games tend to age badly sometimes and this voxel style might avoid that happening earth defense force world brothers comes to the nintendo switch and ps4 on may 27th and i will be buying this game on day one all right, so that is going to do it for today's video. Like I said, a pretty decent variety of stuff coming out for the Switch. You got first-party games, indie games, third-party games, remasters, remakes, redos, whatever you want to call it. You got it on the Nintendo Switch in the month. So let me know in the comments section down below what games you plan on picking up in the month of May for your Switch. Of course, there'll be more games announced after I upload this video, probably like 10 minutes after they'll announce like five more games coming to the Switch because, I mean, that's just how Switch games are, man. They release so much stuff with such a little time Frame. but let me know what you're picking up in the comments down below and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you are new to the channel be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications share the video like the video if you enjoyed it if not i'm sorry i'll try to do better once again a huge thank you to surfshark vpn for sponsoring this video and as always i'll catch you guys on the next one later